understand that we never use Fahrenheit in physics, in calculation. If possible, do not use Celsius. Celsius will work sometimes, but Kelvin will always work. So if you are ever in doubt, use Kelvin. And so in one minute, we're going to look at how we change from one scale to the other. Okay? And you should know this that zero degrees Celsius is 32 Fahrenheit. Did you know that? Zero degrees Celsius is 32. 100 degrees Celsius is 212 Fahrenheit. So to change from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you go nine by five C plus 32. And check if that works. Keep this closer so my voice is gone. All right. Check if this works. Put C is equal to 100 here. Surely you're going to get 105 cancels off. 20 times 9, 180 plus 32 is 212. But when you go backwards, you should remember to have 5 by 9, F minus 32. This will not work unless you subtract 32 first and then multiply by 5, divide by 9. To change into Kelvin, all you got to do is, somebody? Yeah. How do you change plus Celsius into plus Kelvin? 273. Plus 273. So that is what it is. Water is 75% of the human body, 75% of the earth is covered with water. You need to think about water is so important. And water has absolutely marvelous properties. Like we're gonna look at one property of water today called specific heat capacity. <laughs> specific heat capacity, yeah, this topic. Specific heat capacity, what is it? It is the amount of heat that you need to give one kilogram of water to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. Specific heat is the amount of heat that you give to how much? To one kilogram of water to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. See, when I say change its temperature, I can say one degree Celsius or one Kelvin because the change is the same in both. You get that? The change is the same in both. Okay, so sometimes Celsius works. Now for what do you need to give it 4,185 joules to change its temperature, change the temperature of one kilogram to one Celsius. This is called the specific capacity of water. The symbol used is C. So whenever you see C, it's specific heat capacity. So let's get the next formula by asking you this. If I have three kilograms of water at 20 degrees Celsius, how much heat? Q is the symbol for quantity of heat. Q for quantity. How much heat must be given to change its temperature to 25 degrees Celsius? Can you do it? You have three kilograms at 20. How much heat do you need to change it to 25, to heat it to 25? Isn't that easy? You have the specific heat. What are you going to do? <laughs> You're giving a memorized formula, but how would you do it actually? You just multiply the three with that number and multiply it with the change in temperature. So you would go three times, 4185 times five. Where did I get that five from? Five 25 minus, minus yeah. That should make mathematical sense. But actually we have used the formula which is M C delta T. So whenever you heat or cool any substance, you can use this form. And I think it should be very clear. M is the mass of the substance in kilograms. C is specific heat capacity, which will be different for different materials. Delta T is the change in temperature. And for copper, C is like 385. 
Now, why did I give you another example just to compare? So if you heat copper and water, which one is going to get heated up faster? Copper, because it only needs a small. Oh, that's why water is so useful as a coolant in cars. Because it can pick up a lot of heat and yet its temperature doesn't go up that fast. So the coolant that we use, especially in Texas, you don't need antifreeze. But keep adding it, okay? Because only water would lead to corrosion of the radiator. So keep adding it, but we really don't need it. Water is a very good absorbent of heat. Is that clear? What's the reason? It's high specific heat capacity. It has the highest specific heat capacity. Another thing, if you think about it, well, I know those crazy people who believe that life happened on its own. We won't even get there. We don't have time. <laughs> but those people need to answer how water has these marvelous properties. Like in Texas, if water did not have a high specific heat, then in summer, by evening time, by 3 p.m., the temperature of water would have gone so high that you would have heard in newspapers that people fell into the water and died. They got burnt. You never hear that. Why? Because water has a very high specific heat. And at the same time, in the evening, water is still warmer compared to the land. Because anything that gets heated up faster also gets cooler faster, right? No, 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 I said faster, faster. So water gets heated up slower, therefore it'll also cool slower. You gotta be listening to me, please. If you mix a hot object with a cold object, the hot one is gonna lose heat and the cold one is gonna gain heat. So remember that the heat lost by the hot object will be equal to the heat gained by the cold, always. I'll just put it like this. But it's better to write it as heat lost is equal to heat gain. When you mix a hot object with a cold, heat lost by the hot object is equal to heat gained by the cold object. Let's work out a simple problem right now. Very simple. Uh, you have five kilograms of water at 90 degrees Celsius and you mix it with 15 kilograms of water at 20 degrees Celsius. It's a cold morning, somebody needs to take bath. Okay, you see? So they heat water, olden times, that's what we did. Heat water and then mix it with cold water. So that's why there's a lot. Find out the final maximum temperature when you mix them. Is the question clear? You mix this with this. One is at 90, the other is at 20. Please don't tell me that you take the average of the two. That won't work because the masses are different, right? In this case, the material is the same. So what we do is this. Heat lost by the hot water is what? Mc delta T. Come on, heat lost. What is the mass of hot water? Five. That's the heat capacity will be given. Change in temperature. Now, this is where you have to be careful, please. Hot water started at 90. What's it going to end at? That's what I hear many students say and do. 20. No. Started at 90, it's going to end at something bigger than 20. We don't know. That's what we're trying to find. So let's call that TF, meaning final temperature. Here we go. So started at 90 and went to what? TF. So what's the change in temperature? Oh, well, 90 minus TF. Let's go to the cold water. What's the mass of cold water? 15? 15 times what? Same. 4185 times what's the change in temperature? Always go bigger minus smaller. Bigger minus smaller. Yeah. It started at 20, it's finishing at TF, which is bigger. Yeah. 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 Don't make that mistake. And then put them equal to each other because heat lost is equal to heat gained. Isn't it? 
when you put them equal to each other and calculate, you're going to get the answer. I'll give you one and a half minutes to calculate. Go ahead. The next topic is thermal expansion. All materials expand when heated. Solids, liquids, and gases expand when heated. Now, the expansion depends on three things. Number one, it depends on the material. Number two, it de depends on the change in temperature, of course. And number three is what students really miss out on. So to bring number three up, I'm gonna ask you a question, or maybe a couple of questions. Imagine that this door is made of wood and the frame is also made of the same wood, okay? Same wood. And it was constructed in spring and whoever made it, made it exact. Not tight fitting, but exact, right? The door is just matching the door frame. It's in spring. Now we're gonna have a problem in summer or winter when the door is going to jam. Remember I told you the door frame and the door both are made of the same material. Now the question is, is it in summer or in winter that the door is going to jam? Alright, the answer came out in a half a second, like one second, which means you did not think. You didn't think. Because this is what you thought. You said, oh, in summer it expands. But don't they both expand? Why do you keep forgetting this? This is physics. You are thinking only the door expands. Hey, the door frame also expands. And are they, are they going to expand equally? No. Which one is slightly bigger to start with? The door or the door frame? Which one is slightly bigger? The door frame, for sure because the door fits inside the door frame. The one that's a slightly bigger will expand a little bit more. So in summer, the door frame expands a little bit more than the door, which means there will be a gap between them. Is that clear to understand? But in winter, the door frame will contract a little bit more than the door. Contract a little bit more than the door, which means it will jam. Right now, you should be facing it at home. Some of the doors in winter will jam. So that's one question. The second question is even more interesting. If you take a metal plate, a metal plate, and let's say there's a hole in it, and you heat it, what happens to the diameter of the hole? What happens to the diameter of the hole? Okay, I, I hear one answer, Mandy's answering nobody. Okay, so what will happen to the diameter of the hole? Will it increase or decrease? Now I scared you to death, you won't answer, right? Think, it's okay to answer, but think. You might have two answers. Some of you saying it'll decrease, some of you saying it'll increase. I'll help you find it. You take the same square plate and instead of cutting out a hole, draw a circle with a marker, right? Heat it. Heat it. Now it should be easier for you to answer. What happens to the diameter of this circle that I've drawn when heated? Increases. Increases. The same as the answer here. Unfortunately, students seem to think that it will become smaller. No way. It will expand. The hole becomes bigger. You know that in horse carts, the, the wheels are made of wood? and uh, they fit on iron tires on that. You know how they do that? Initially, the iron tire has exactly the same radius as the wooden wheel, but the tire is heated to a very high temperature. What's going to happen? It expands, that's what I told you right now. And then while it's still hot, they carefully place it on the wood. And when it cools down, you're going to have a tight fit like never before. It's never going to come off. And so there are so many applications for expansion. Another one that I want to give you is the Golden Gate Bridge. You know it's long, right? Have you been there? It, in summer, it expands about three feet, 2.7 feet in summer. So you got to allow gap for expansion. 
Therefore, one end of the bridge is kept on rollers. So in summer, when it expands, the rollers move. It's not going to happen in a day. You're not going to, whoo! No, it's going to happen slowly. Expansion gaps are left in concrete roads in Texas. Driving in Texas is crazy anyways, but on concrete roads, you hear that noise, you know, because there are gaps. In our driveways, you have gaps and filled with wood or something like that. You see that? Or, or in a railroad, there are gaps. That's why when you travel in a train, it makes that noise as it falls into those gaps. The iron wheels fall into the gaps. And so there are so many examples for expansion. Expansion is important for you to understand. One of the applications that you may not have thought about is how the refrigerator switches on and off or how the automatic iron switches on and off. It's by using a bimetallic strip. So you have two metals revetted together, two different metals A and B, and one metal has a bigger expansivity than the other one. So what happens is when it gets heated up, so let's say expansion of A is greater than that of B, when you heat it, because they're stuck together, it's going to bend. Because A has to have a bigger length. You know what? what I'm trying to draw. And you have an electrical connection here, touching here. When it bends off, that connection is broken, so it switches off. And as it cools, it comes back and makes that contact again. So that's called a thermostat. You've heard of the name, I'm sure, haven't you? So wherever you have automatic something working on heat, it's a thermostat and refrigerators and ACs. Uh, you have a thermostat to control your AC, you know that, right? Okay. It can be a little different. It need not be, uh, AC thermostats are not right by metallic strips, please. Don't misunderstand me. This is for an automatic iron and a refrigerator, yes. Okay, but now we need some formulas for expansion. Change in length. Didn't I tell you that uh, expansion depends on three quantities? Let me go back. What did I say? It depends on the material, on the change in temperature, and the original length. Okay, so you have that formula for change in length. That's the original length. This is alpha. It's called linear expansivity. It's a constant for each material. And of course, this is, what is this? This is the Change in temperature. Change in temperature, okay? Now, when you talk about fluids, isn't it crazy to talk about change in length of a fluid? <laughs> There's no sense. Because a liquid or a gas only has volume, right? So, you've got to translate this formula to change in volume is equal to original volume times beta times alpha t where beta is called volume expansivity. Volume expansivity. Same kind of formula. But here's a question. Would a solid have volume expans expansion? No, yeah, you can have a steel cube. So now, a solid has both linear and cubical or cubical expansivity is also called volume expansivity. So the connection between alpha and beta is beta is three times alpha for a solid. Beta is three times Would alpha. Would it be wise for farmers in winter, like below freezing, to spray water on their trees to protect the trees? Now think a minute, please. Would it be a wise decision? It's below freezing. And they just spray water on their trees or plants. Would that be a wise decision? It's going to stay below freezing for many days. So don't think about the instant when they spray it. Think about the days it's going to stay below freezing. Especially in the Northeast, you know, it's going to be there. So. 
yes it would be a wise decision because ice is a blanket ice is actually a blanket it doesn't allow heat to escape through it did you know that and the thicker ice becomes the bigger the blanket becomes and so yes when you spray it it's going to take some heat where what's going to take some heat what's going to take some heat for water to turn into ice should heat be added or removed removed so what's going to remove the heat the plants are going to get that heat oh, i hope you understood did you Because it doesn't stay below freezing here. It's just like freeze. And then that change in temperature affects it, you know, during that time. Because when are you going to spray water? After it gets to freezing point, you need to be awake for that. Usually the temperature drops at night. Nobody's going to do that. So it's all these things. And I'm talking about trees, actually. I'm not talking about plants that cannot withstand low temperatures. Correct. Exactly. And trees cannot be carried indoors. Me? <laughs> That's I was talking about trees. Okay. You know, we are so selfish. We would not have cared for the water organisms in winter. Or we don't. In fact, we can't. That takes a lot of money and resources. So nature cares for water organisms like this. And you tell me this happened by chance. So this is a pond, a huge pond. And the outside temperature is below freezing for so many days. What is going to turn into ice, correct? But ice has, a has lower density than water. So ice floats. And so if it stays below freezing for a lot of days, the thickness of ice will keep increasing, but at a very slow rate. Why? Because for each kilogram of water to turn into ice, how much heat should be removed? Are you getting what I'm saying? You need a lot of heat to go for water to turn into ice. So the thickness will increase at a very slow rate. And what did I tell you? Ice is like a blanket, isn't it? So the, water in, so the heat in the water will stay there. All right, number two. Now, number three, crazy, number three. So let's say that it was below freezing for 15 days. The thickness of ice has gone that, has become bigger. You know what the temperature is at the bottom of the pond? It's four degrees Celsius. What? Because water has the highest density at four degrees Celsius. And that's what is a thousand kilogram per meter cube. We just take it as thousand at any temperature because it's a good number. We like it. But actually, the density of water is 1,000 at what temperature? At what? Four degrees Celsius. I'm going to connect it with something. If you are listening, you'll understand. So the water organisms are OK. Nature has, prevent, uh, has provided a heating mechanism. You tell me all this happened by chance. Talk to me after the class. Why do water pipes burst in winter? Why do water pipes, you have to have your pipes covered, right? Especially if they are above the ground. Why do they? Because when water freezes and becomes ice, the volume goes up. That's why the density goes down, because density is mass by volume. Are you listening to me? That's why there's a chance of it bursting because when it expands even steel cannot withhold it it'll just crack through steel believe me but if you heat ice and when it turns into water what's happening to the volume decreasing will it keep on decreasing no it'll decrease until four degrees celsius once it goes above four degrees celsius like any other liquid its volume will begin increasing. Are you listening to me? That's why I said water has minimum volume at, help me, four degrees Celsius, which means it has maximum density at four degrees Celsius. This is called, because I've said it, the anomalous expansion of water. The anomalous expansion 
a word. This word means extraordinary, means special. Have you all seen, have you all, has anybody tried boiling milk? We get pasteurized milk, but in farms, you know, the milk, the cow, they get the milk and they try to boil it. Because you've never seen it, you would never know. Nobody has. When milk boils, if you're not near milk, you're going to lose all of it. Once it reaches its boiling point, milk expands to 100 times its volume. Has anybody heard about this? Nisreen, you have. You're shaking your head. You have. Try it. The milk that you buy, just today, try it. But don't spill it because once it begins to boil, if you're not near it, you will see it come up and spill. I just told you. There are three oh, ways in which heat can be transferred from one point to another. Three ways, three methods of transferring heat from one point to another. <laughs> no. One is conduction. Conduction. Second is convection. Convection. Convection and radiation. Evaporation. No, that's not a mode of transfer of heat, no. No. In biology. No, that's not a mode of transfer of heat. In biology it is because they're talking about when it evaporates, it loses heat, you know, but that's not an actual method of transfer. Conduction takes place in a solid. So if you have a steel rod in your hand, one end in the flame, and you sing a song, you won't sing for long. <laughs> but it'll take some time for the heat to reach your hand. So conduction is a slower process. Conduction takes place in solids. It's a slower process. And if you have a metal rod of length and area of cross-section, and you have this side at T1 degrees Celsius, and the other end is at T2 degrees Celsius. Heat goes through the rod by conduction, right? And the formula for quantity of heat conducted in a second, that's time. When I use a small t, that's time. So quantity of heat by the time is given by Ka T1 minus T2 by length. That is the formula for conduction that you need to know. Quantity of heat conducted in T seconds is equal to K A T1 minus T2 by the length. Now, what are those? K is a constant, which is called thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity. So if you do not want uh, more heat to be transferred, you must use a material that has a lower thermal conductivity, right? What do we use uh, for insulation in our attics? Fiber wool? <clears throat> Come on. Does it have a big thermal conductivity or a low thermal conductivity? Low. low. And what could you also do? If you make the length bigger, length in that case is the thickness of the insulation. If you make it bigger, then you're going to have less Q. Are you listening? So instead of having three inches, if you have six inches, wow, that insulates much better. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hello? And there's one thing, you know, which you need to remember. What makes a substance a good insulator is actually trapped air. Trapped air. Like double window panes. You need not fill it with argon or anything. They're just cheating us. You have a double window pane. What do you have between the two panes? Air. air. And air is a very bad conductor of heat. So in summer, if you have a double window pane, your electricity bill is going to be cut down by more than half. Believe me. 
if all the windows are replaced with double and some of our homes which were built before 2000 they have single window panes they were trying to cheat us like they always do <laughs> and that's another reason okay you need to understand that's another reason why wearing a jacket on a cold day helps us because between the shirt and the jacket there is air trapped and air is a bad conductor of heat or let me ask it this way so you enjoy it is it better to wear one thick shirt or to wear two thin shirts thank you because between those you have air trap but another thing if you wear a sweater you know that a sweater is made of wool which traps air Hello. so it's always the air wait 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 my mind is raising have you seen birds in winter fluff up their feathers they kind of know more physics than us <laughs> they're trying to fill it with air they do the dance and fill it with air to keep themselves warm I gave you so many examples. I hope you understood. Did you? Now, when it comes to working out problems, it will be direct problems. What is A usually? A would be the A would be pi r squared if it's circular in cross section, right? It depends. So that would be A. There's nothing else that can. What is this? What do you mean by the length here? If we are talking about a building, wouldn't that length be the thickness of the walls? Hello. What would be T1 in summer? T1 would be in summer or winter. T1 would be the temperature outside. T2 would be the temperature inside. Are you making all this? So I keep asking you problems in that. So you should work out problems there. Yeah. Convection takes place in fluids. Convection takes place in fluids, means liquids and gases. So actually, when you try to heat water in a container, this is what's going on. You don't realize this. When you start heating it, normally you heat it at the bottom, right? And then when you heat it there, the liquid layer there gets hot. When anything gets hot, its density decreases. So it goes to the top. <clears throat> and so the layer that was above it falls. Same thing happens to it. And so it now goes to the top. But by the time it goes to the top, the layer that went to the top first has cooled down, so it will come, it will drop down. Are you with? So this and process is repeated in the liquid continuously. Those are called convection currents. Don't you think the same process is happening in the atmosphere? Because when the sun shines, the ground gets hot. The air in contact with the ground becomes hot. What happens? I'm so glad it rises up. If convection had not happened, we would not have been alive for more than three minutes. It would have gotten so hot. You know what I'm saying? The hot air rises to the top of the atmosphere and the cooler air takes its place. So this thing continuously happens in nature to maintain a kind of equilibrium, you see? So that's why we are safe. 